Do you feel like you don't speak enough Hebrew? That you need to know more words? Then stick around. With these lessons, you'll pick up some of the most common words in just a few minutes. Now, this video is a small portion of our learning program. To get the full lessons, translations, and fluency fast study tools, click the link in the description and sign up for your free lifetime account. Hi, everybody. My name is Edith. Welcome to the 800 Core Hebrew Words and Phrases video series. This series will teach you the 800 most common words and phrases in Hebrew. But there's a twist. With each new lesson in the series, we'll include the previous lessons at the end. So, after you've learned the new words and phrases, stick around and review what you learned in previous lessons. Reviewing is one of the most important parts of learning a language. You can also get the full list right now at hebrewpod101.com. Click the link in the description to access more example sentences, create your own flashcard deck, and finally master Hebrew. Okay, let's get started. First is... Chulza. Shirt. Chulza. Chul Tsa. Shirt. Hachulza alta matayim shkalim. The shirt costs 200 shekels. Hachulza alta matayim shkalim. Michnasayim. Pants. Michnasayim. Michnasayim. Pants. Ani tzrikha zug michnasayim. I would like a pair of pants. Ani tzrikha zug michnasayim. Simla. Dress. Simla. Simla. Dress. Yesh simla yafa b'chanut azot. There is a nice dress in the store. Yesh. Simla Yafa Bachanut Hazot Amar Say Amar A Mar Say Mamart לא אמרתי כלום. What did you say? I didn't say anything. מה אמרת? לא אמרתי כלום. להתקשר. call. להתקשר. להתק. Share. Call. Ha'im tuchali it kasher la misparaze? Could you call this number? Ha'im tuchal lehit kasher la mispar haze? Limtso. Find. Limtso. Limtso. Find. Ani lo matzliach limtso et aderech hazara la malon sheli. I can't find the way back to my hotel. Ani lo matzliach limtso. 
את הדרך חזרה למלון שלי. נקי. קלין. נקי. נא. קי. קלין. המדינה הזאת נקייה מאוד. This country is very clean. המדינה הזאת נקייה מאוד. מלוכלך. Dirty. מלוכלך. מלוכלך. Dirty. עדשת המצלמה מלוכלכת. The camera's lens is dirty. עדשת המצלמה מלוכלכת. גזר. Carrot. גזר. גזר. Carrot. אתה יכול להוסיף גזר לסלט? Can you add carrot to the salad? אתה יכול להוסיף גזר לסלט? בצל. עניין. בצל. בצל. עניין. היא רוצה פיצה עם בצל. She wants pizza with onions. היא רוצה פיצה עם בצל. חסה. Lettuce. חסה. חסה. Lettuce. חסה מכילה ויטמין K. Lettuce contains vitamin K. חסה מכילה ויטמין K. Kevis. Sheep. Kevis. Kevis. Sheep. Ha Kevis ochel et hadeshe hayarok. The sheep is eating the green grass. הכבש אוכל את הדשא הירוק. ארנב Rabbit ארנב R nav Rabbit ארנבים הם חמודים, אבל מסריחים. Rabbits are cute, but smelly. ארנבים הם חמודים, אבל מסריחים. כלב ים Seal, the animal. כלב ים. כלב 
yam. Seal, the animal. Kalbe yam, chayim ba'azurim, hakarim ba'yoter. Seals live in the coldest areas. Kalbe yam, chayim ba'azurim, hakarim ba'yoter. Anan. Cloud. Anan. A na n. Cloud. Mezeg ha'avir ayom hu shimshi im ananim izdamnim. Today's weather is sunny with occasional clouds. מזג האוויר היום הוא שמשי עם עננים מזדמנים. שמשי סאני שמשי שמשי סאני בימים שמשיים, חוף הים מלא באנשים. On sunny days, the beach is very crowded. בימים שמשיים, חוף הים מלא באנשים. גשום rainy גשום. גשום. ריני. אני חייבת לחלק עיתונים בימים גשומים ובימים סוערים. I have to deliver newspapers on rainy days and windy days. אני חייבת לחלק עיתונים בימים גשומים ובימים סוערים. תינוק בייבי תינוק תינוק בייבי התינוק מטופל על ידי המטפלת. The baby is being taken care of by the nanny. התינוק מטופל על ידי המטפלת. ילדה girl ילדה יל דה. גרל. הילדה אוהבת לאכול פסטה. The girl loves to eat pasta. הילדה אוהבת לאכול פסטה. ילד. בוי. ילד. ילד. בוי. יש לילד כלב מחמד. The boy has a pet dog. יש לילד כלב מחמד. Well done! In this lesson, you expanded your vocabulary and learned 20 new useful words. Click the link in the description and sign up for free at HebrewPod101.com to get access to the full list of vocabulary you need for daily life conversations. You'll also get example sentences, custom flashcard decks, and more learning resources. See you next time. Shalom! You! Hey, you!
You. Yeah, you. Welcome to Hebrew Talk Words. So, my name is Yara, and I do not know uh, today's words, but the theme is 10 hardest words to pronounce in Hebrew. So, let's begin. Chatzotzra, trumpet. Chatzotzra, trumpet. Haiti rotzalen again bechatzotzra. I would like to play the trumpet. Letzachzeach, to brush. חשוב מאוד לצחצח שיניים פעמיים ביום. It is very important to brush your teeth twice a day. צריכים. Must, need. צריכים. Must. צריכים is, is the word must, but in the plural masculine version of this word. הם צריכים. They must, they need. For example, הם צריכים לעזוב את המסיבה המוקדם. They must leave the party early. They must or they need to. Or they have to. חתיכה. Peace. חתיכה. Peace. I, it's not like it... These are not tongue twisters. It's just... It's for people who can't pronounce ח. אפשר לקבל חתיכת עוגה בבקשה? Can I have a piece of cake, please? מנצנץ. Sparkling. I love this word, minutes, sparkling. Yeah, I, okay, I love this lesson. These are really fun words. It's fun to say, try it. Come on. Nice. For example, השרשרת שלי מנצנצת. My necklace is sparkly. Uh, it's not really, but just, you know, use your imagination. פעלולים, special effects. פעלולים. But it's more fun saying it fast, פעלולים. So usually like a stuntman will be called פעלולן. Now that I, 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 I'm saying it over and over again, I'm like, is this a real word? I'm not sure all of a sudden, but it is. Wow, מי היה אחראי על הפעלולים בסרט הזה? Wow, who was in charge of the special effects in this movie? שפשוף, rub. This is a noun. The verb will be לשפשף. אם נשפך לכם יין אדום על השטיח, תשפשפו אותו במלח. If you spilled red wine on your carpet, rub it with salt. Someone told me about this method, I did not uh, check it, so I don't really know. לצחקק, to giggle. לצחקק, to giggle. Oh, that's a wonderful word. To laugh is לצחוק. So this is like the smaller version of it, לצחקק. And the noun version is צחקוק, צחקוקים, in plural. הם לא הפסיקו לצחקק בזמן שדיברתי. They wouldn't stop giggling while I was talking. How rude. מחצלת, מת. מחצלת, מת. כשאתם הולכים לים, אל תשכחו לקחת מחצלת. When you go to the beach, don't forget to take a mat. שרוכים, shoelaces. שרוכים, שולייסס. באיזה גיל למדתם לקשור את השרוכים? What age did you learn to tie your own shoelaces? So that's it. Thank you so much for watching the 10 hardest word uh, to pronounce in Hebrew. I hope you learned something new. Tell us in the comments what was your favorite word and don't forget to check the website. And don't forget to subscribe. See you next time. Bye. Now, if you're wondering how to remember these words forever so that you can start speaking more and more, here's how. One, review them with our spaced repetition flashcards. Our flashcards will drill these words into your long-term memory. Two, save the words to our word bank, your personal collection of words, where you can print out physical study sheets. And three, watch our looped vocabulary slideshows on repeat until you understand every word. You'll find these tools inside our learning program. Just click the link in the description to get them. Hi everyone, Edith here. Today we're going to talk about 10 responses to How are you? In Hebrew, of course. Ma shlomcha? How are you? Ma shlomcha? How are you? So yeah, like this is the most common way to ask people 
in Hebrew how they are. You can also say like, hey, what's up? Or, you know, how's it going? But the most simple way is, ma shlomcha? Veta? And you? So after you've been asked, how are you? And you've given your response, you would ask the other person, and you? Veta? Ani besedel. I'm fine. Ani besedel. I'm fine. Yeah, just besedel is literally just fine. It can be, you know, fine. It can be fine. Shlomi lo ra. I'm not bad. Shlomi lo ra. I'm not bad. So I think people usually would say that after they maybe they had a bit of a rough time, I don't know, like maybe at work or something personal, and then when people ask them how they're doing, so they would say, oh, I'm not bad, like, you know, it's getting better. Gam shlomitov. I'm fine too. Gam shlomitov. I'm fine too. When you say gam in the beginning of the sentence, it's the same as saying in English too, but in the end of the sentence. So in Hebrew you would say it first. Gam shlomitov. Anishnuni. I'm sleepy. Anishnuni. I'm sleepy. I think nowadays it's like a very common thing to say, like, how are you doing? Oh, I'm sleepy. When do you guys actually like wake up? I only wake up after I have a cup of coffee and then maybe another hour. Animargish <laughs> ra. I'm feeling bad. Animargish ra. I'm feeling bad. So if you're ill, usually yes, ill or having a headache, you would say that you feel bad. It's not so much as like an emotional thing, you know, I'm hurting, I'm sad, it's like I feel bad, I'm, I'm ill. Shlomi Metsuyan, I'm great. Shlomi Metsuyan, I'm great. When you're really doing well, like you really have it, it's like I'm great, Metsuyan. Echo lechitcha? How have you been? Echo lechitcha. How have you been? So since in Hebrew we don't have as much tenses as English, and we don't have like all of the progressive tenses, it's just past, past, um, present and future. Um, when we try to ask like, oh, how have you been during the last few days? How have you been during the last few weeks? So we would say, Echo lechitcha. How are things going for you? Pretty much that's the literal translation. Manishma, what's up? Manishma, what's up? Um, so this is like the number one most common expression um, in Israel when you ask people how they're doing and it's very friendly and casual. Like when you say Manishma, it's just like saying what's up. And the literal translation, it's like saying what is heard? Like, what do you have to tell me that is new? Please do. Please tell me. Um, so that's it. That's Manishma. So thanks everyone. Thank you for watching that video. Today we discussed about how to respond to how are you. Please let me know in the comments below, like, what are the most surprising responses you ever gotten? It's like, oh, how are you? Uh, yeah, my dog died. It's, you know, stuff like that. And please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like up this video. And also don't forget to get into uh, HebrewPod101.com for more content and more Hebrew. And I will see you all next time. Lehitrot! Hi everybody, Edith here. Welcome to Hebrew Top Words. And today we are going to talk about 10 ways to say hello. Let's get started. Boker Tov. Good morning. Boker Tov. Good morning. Some people, if they're having like kind of a bad morning and they don't want to say good morning or Boker Tov, they would just say like Boker morning, obviously. <laughs> Shalom. Hello. Shalom. Hello. Shalom also means peace in Hebrew. So it's almost kind of Rastafarian, you know, peace. Harbe zman lo hitra'enu. Long time no see. Harbe zman lo hitra'enu. Long time no see. 
I guess in Hebrew it's not quite as natural to say as it is in English.、Um, so if you really want to be super casual,、um, you can also say something like、um, "Why, Shanim?" It's like it's like saying "Whoa, ages," without even saying "It has been just ages." Echolechitcha, how have you been? Echolechitcha, how have you been? This is more of a way to ask somebody like that you really haven't seen for a while, like, "What has he been up to?" And you say it, "Echolechitcha," which is a very casual way of saying it. That's very useful. Mashlomcha, how are you? Mashlomcha, how are you? Shlomcha. Also comes from the word shalom, so literally it's kind of like asking, "How is your peace?" Ech hayom shalcha. How is your day? Ech hayom shalcha. How is your day? Um, that's a nice thing to text somebody like your boyfriend or girlfriend in the middle of the day, um, just to see how they're doing. Ma kore. What's up, Makore? What's up? There are so many ways of saying it in Hebrew.、Um, the most common ones is are this this one, Makore, which is more like what's happening, and also Manishma, which is like what's up. Erev tov. Good evening. Erev tov. Good evening. So, like English, I think erev tov is not something that you would use like with your friends or in any casual situation. It's more like when you're going to a restaurant or some sort of a service giver would say that, not like with friends. Naim lehakirotcha. It's nice to meet you. Naim lehakirotcha. Nice to meet you. Um, as a matter of fact, a more common way of saying it is to just drop the last part, dropping the otach or otcha, and simply say naim lehakir. It's like saying、uh, in English, "It's a pleasure." Ech hakol, how's everything? Ech hakol, how's everything?、Uh, also, very like. Friendly way of asking, like "How's life?"、Um, and if you want to ask "How's life?", you can ask "Ech hachaim." Okay, everybody, that's it. This was ten ways to say hello in Hebrew. Let me know in the, com- in the comments below if there's anything else that you would like to know. And I would say goodbye in ten different ways, but I don't have any time. So see you next time. Goodbye. שלום, אני יאנה. Welcome to HebrewPod101.com's אלף בית בקלי קלות. The fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn the Hebrew alphabet. The אלף בית. In the last lesson, we finished up the first ten Hebrew letters of the אלף בית and six Nikud symbols. Can you remember how to write "good brother" in Hebrew? I'm sure you can do it. Now let's move on to the eleventh letter, kaf. The sound of kaf is k. Let's write it. Kaf, just half a circle to the right, starting from the upper left side and going down. The print is the same but with sharp corners. Kaf, kaf actually is only pronounced like k when it has a dot inside, just like bet only has the b sound when it has this dot. Without the dot, it sounds like ch. Chaf. A good example is the word kochav, kochav, which means a star. K, O, Ch, V, kochav, and in print version, kochav. Be careful, though. The letter chaf. 
takes a different shape when it is written at the end of the word. It looks like this. Half so fit. The print is quite similar. Half so fit. Now let's have a short review of the first 11 letters, the first half of the alphabet. Be ready with a pen and a paper. I'll say the letter out loud, starting from Aleph, and give you a second to write it down, first in handwriting and then in print style. Then I will write it myself, first the handwriting version and then the print. Are you ready? Let's go! Aleph Aleph, Bet. Bet, Gimel. Gimel, Dalet. Dalet, hey. Hey, vav. Vav, zain. Zain Chet Chet Tet Tet Yod Yod and Kaf Kaf. Good job. Now it's time for Yana's insights. How is your Aleph Bet learning going? If you're having a tough time with some characters, how about checking them out on the Aleph Bet chart in HebrewPod101.com's Learning Center? Don't just get stuck in one learning method. Mix it up for the best results. In this lesson, we studied the letter Kaf with its variations and did a review of the last 11 Aleph Bet letters. Next lesson, we will continue with two more letters. Do you know what Lama means? So why not join me in the next lesson? See you then. Bye. Remember, here's what you can do to learn all of these words by heart. Drill these words with our spaced repetition flashcards, which will help cement these words into your long-term memory. Save them to the Word Bank, your personal vocabulary collection where you can print out your own study sheets, or review the words with our looped vocabulary slideshow and play it until you know all of the words. So click the link in the description right now and sign up for your free lifetime account to get these lessons and study tools. I should have done a little dance before I sat down. Hi everyone, my name is Yara and this is Top 25 Hebrew Nouns. Let's begin. Yom, day. Etmol aya yom ha'uledet sheli. Yesterday was my birthday. It wasn't really. Shana, year. Ashana achrona ita metsuyenet. The last year was wonderful. Sha'a, hour. Sha'a means hour, but when you want to know what time it is, you ask Maha Sha'a, which literally translates as uh, what hour is this? Maha Sha'a. 
What time is it? חלון, window. תפתחי את החלון, חם פה. Open a window, it's hot in here. It is. בית, home. בית, home, uh, or house, it's the same. ברוך הבא לבית שלי. Welcome to my home, or to my house. עבודה, work. It's a work, it's also a job. יש לי עבודה חדשה. I have a new job. דרך, way. הדרך הביתה ארוכה מאוד. The way home is very long. מקום, place. מה היה המקום האחרון שביקרת בו? What was the last place you visited? תל אף אם זה כאן. חבר, friend. חבר, friend. It also means a boyfriend, uh, which can be kind of confusing sometimes. הלכתי עם החבר שלי לסרט. I went with my friend to watch a movie. It can also mean I went with my boyfriend to watch a movie, so... Yeah. Chaim. Life. There's a band called Chaim. So actually this noun in Hebrew is one of the very few that is plural. Elu Chaim Niflaim. What a wonderful life. Chavra. Company. Itkabalti laavoda bechavra gdola. I got a job in a big company. Mispar. Number. Ma mispar adira shelach? What is your apartment number? קבוצה, group. יש קבוצה גדולה של אנשים מחוץ לחלון שלי. There's a big group of people outside my window. And they're noisy. עובדה, fact. חתולים הם אדירים, וזאת עובדה. Cats are awesome, and that's a fact. בעיה, problem. אני יכולה לתקן לך את המחשב, זאת לא בעיה. I can fix your computer, it's not a problem. <laughs> Definitely can't. ילד. Child, how many children do you have? כמה ילדים יש לך? עולם, world. אני חולמת לעשות טיול מסביב לעולם. I dream of going on a trip around the world. Finance me. שבוע, week. אני יוצאת לחופשה של שבוע. I'm going on a one week vacation. משפחה, family. יש לה משפחה גדולה. She has a big family. אינטרנט. אינטרנט. סבתא שלי בדיוק למדה לגלוש באינטרנט. My grandmother just learned to surf the internet. You go, grandma! היי! חודש. מאנט. I'm going on a one month vacation. I'm unemployed. אני מקבלת משכורת כל חודש. I get my salary every month. אוכל. Food. מה האוכל האהוב עליכם? What is your favorite food? יד. Hand. תני לי את היד שלך, אני אעזור לך לעלות. Give me your hand, I'll help you up. רחוב, street. הבית שלי נמצא בקצה הרחוב. My house is at the end of the street. סבתא, grandma. A lot of people say סבתא, because it's like easier to say. לסבתא שלי יש חשבון פייסבוק. My grandma has a Facebook account. Add her now! Okay, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching uh, Top 25 Hebrew Nouns. And uh, don't forget to subscribe. Okay, we'll see you next time. Bye. That's kind of something my grandma would say. Who chose these words? Never heard any complaints yet. Shalom everybody, Edith here, welcome to Hebrew Top Words, and today we are going to talk about 15 must-know family words. Let's get started. Mishpacha, family. Mishpacha, family. Zot muna shel mishpachti. This is a picture of my family. Av, Abba, father. Av, Abba, father. Miha Abba shel Mario. Who is Mario's father? So in Hebrew, there are basically two ways for saying father or dad. And one of them is Abba, which is the more natural one, a normal one that people use. And it can mean dad or daddy or father also. It's like a real word. It's not just like daddy. Um, and Av is a little bit more biblical and more formal. And people don't usually use it, but it's still it's an important word to know. Obviously, both of the words are very close, with just the difference of one letter in the end. Um, so you can understand, but 
just so you'll know that av is a bit more serious, I guess. Baal, husband. Baal, husband. Baali ahuv mevashel bishvili. My beloved husband is cooking for me. So, actually now, a lot of women, and especially, I guess, feminist women, um, don't want to use the word Baal anymore because it, it, is, it does come from the word owner. And, of course, yes, it comes from the Bible, and back then men used to own women. But since we don't live at that time anymore, uh, many women just don't say that word anymore, and they say uh, an equivalent to my man, which is ishi, ben, son, ben, son, haben sheli, student baunivarsita. My son is a university student. This is really easy. The word for son in Hebrew is just the same as the word for boy, um, ben. Ach, brother, ach, brother. לאבא שלי יש שלושה אחים. My father has three brothers. This is also like a very easy word, אח. If you got your chetz right, then you'll be fine. דוד, uncle. דוד, uncle. הדוד שלי רופא. My uncle is a doctor. Another interesting like factoid is that the word דוד in the Bible doesn't only mean uncle, but sometimes it's used as meaning my love, um, especially in the Song of Songs and uh, Salmi, but it doesn't have anything to do, like the word uncle and the word my love or lover has any nothing to do with each other, so. Saba, grandfather. Saba, grandfather. Yarashti tashaon azeh mi saba sheli. I inherited this clock from my grandfather. So, as you can see, most of the words in Hebrew for, like, family members are quite short and easy because you use them a lot. <laughs> um, family is very important in Jewish culture and in Israeli culture. It's a very, very family-oriented culture, I guess. So, yeah, like, even the words for dad and granddad are very similar. It's Abba and Saba. M. Ima. Mother. M. Ima. Mother. Ima ve Abba Sheli hayun esuim chamishim shana. My mother and father were married for 50 years. So again, for the word for mom or mother, the word Ima is more common and used as mom, mommy, mother. And the word M again is more biblical, it's shorter, it's more official. Um, just the same as we've learned about father. Bat. Daughter. Bat. Daughter. Habat shelanu professorit ba universita, vhaben shelanu isha sakim. Our daughter is a university professor, and our son is a businessman. Again, very easy. The word for daughter is just the same as the word for girl. Bat. Achot. Sister. Achot. Sister. Hi achot agdola sheli, vhi orechet din. She is my older sister, and she is a lawyer. Achot. As you can probably tell, sounds very similar to ach, just with a suffix for female. <laughs> Isha, wife. Isha, wife. He Isha ve'em. She's a wife and a mother. The word for wife is the same as the word for woman. <laughs> it's very simple. Um, it's like, she's my woman, she's my wife. It's the same. Um, and when a man says my wife, he would say, the most common way to hear it is ishti. Chamot. Chama. Mother-in-law. Chamot. Chama. Mother-in-law. Al titen lechama shtaltanit lirdot becha. Don't be pushed around by an overbearing mother-in-law. It's not just the mothers, everybody, okay? Also, there are two words for the word mother-in-law, and they're very similar. Chama and chamot. And they're both used kind of, you know, interchangeably. Savta, grandmother. Savta, grandmother. Savta machina et pala tapuchim atov ba'olam. My grandmother makes the best apple pie in the world. Well, I guess American grandmothers. <laughs> My grandmother made the best rice casserole in the world. <laughs> Bat zug, ben zug. 
partner, bat zug, ben zug, partner. הרבה גברים צעירים מחפשים בת זוג. Many young men are looking for a partner. So in Hebrew, again, you always have the difference between male and female, unlike English when partner can be both male and female. So when you're talking about a boy partner, it's ben zug, and a girl partner is bat zug. Um, like we've learned that Ben is boy and bat is girl and also daughter and Ben is also son. It's very, very simple. Doda, aunt. Doda, aunt. Hadoda sheli ohevet prachim tsaubim. My aunt likes yellow flowers. Sometimes we use the word for aunt in Hebrew also when we see just like a woman who's a little bit older, maybe like in her 50s and she seems to you know, have this older woman vibe, or when we say about somebody that she dresses older from her age or puts a makeup that makes her look older than her true age, then we can say that she looks like a doda, she looks like an aunt. Um, I don't know why that is, but actually I think that's a very accurate way to say it, like, oh yeah, she looks like a tall aunt. So, yeah. Okay, everybody, that's it for today. Today we've learned about 15 must-know family words in Hebrew. Please let me know in the comments below. Tell me about your family and who is your favorite family member. And don't forget to like up this video, subscribe, and check out HebrewPod101.com for more Hebrew, more context, and I'll see you next time. Bye! Hi everyone, welcome to the Ultimate Hebrew Pronunciation Guide. In this lesson, you'll learn all five Hebrew vowel sounds. A, E, I, O, U. By learning all of these sounds, you'll be able to pronounce any vowel that could possibly appear in Hebrew. Are you ready? Then let's get started. The first vowel sound is A. Gum, Bach, Dag. This vowel sound is very similar to the A in far. A, 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 A. The next vowel sound is E, Shell, Ken, Kehe. It's very similar to the E in the word education. E, 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 E. The next vowel sound is E, Misim, Imun, Tinok. This is identical to the I in Ski. E, 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 E. The next vowel sound is O. Shalom, Noar, Chalom. It's very similar to the O sound in the word or. O, 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 O. The last vowel sound for this lesson is U, Tmuna. Aduma, medura. This is identical to the U in the word rule. U, 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 U. 
Well done. You've just learned all five vowel sounds in Hebrew. With these sounds, you can pronounce any vowel that could possibly appear in the Hebrew language. Isn't that great? Which vowel sound was the most difficult for you to pronounce? Let us know in the comments. In the next lesson, you'll start learning consonant sounds. See you in the next Ultimate Hebrew Pronunciation Guide lesson. Welcome to Introduction to Hebrew. My name is Alicia, and I'm joined by... Hi everyone, I'm Edith. In this lesson, you'll learn the basics of Hebrew grammar. Word order refers to the order in which words are structured to form a sentence in a given language. The first thing you must remember when reading Hebrew is that it's read from right to left. Consider the English sentence, he ate an apple, but first, Let's remove the article an here for simplicity. So we're just left with he ate apple. The basic word order for English is subject, verb, object, or SVO for short. If we break down the English sentence he ate apple, we can see that the subject he is presented first, followed by the verb ate. And then finally, the object apple is positioned last. This is the basic word order for sentences in English. Now let's compare that same sentence. He ate an apple in Hebrew. Hu achal tapuach. In Hebrew, you only need an article for definite articles. Here we have only an indefinite article, so we don't need a word like a or n. If we break down the Hebrew sentence, we get the subject hu, meaning he. Then comes the verb achal, meaning ate. And finally, we have the object tapuach meaning apple. The word order for Hebrew is the same as English, subject, verb, object, or SVO for short. In Hebrew, for simple sentences with a verb, the order is the same as in English. Word order varies in Hebrew for emphasis and in more complicated sentences. You don't have to worry about that until you learn the basics. For now, use the basic subject, verb, object form when making sentences in Hebrew. Okay. Let's move on to the next section. In Hebrew, you want to begin with the subject of your sentence. Let's start with the pronoun I. In Hebrew, that's ani. Next, you need your verb. In the present tense, there are four forms for verbs according to masculine, feminine, masculine plural, and feminine plural. When your subject is I, the verb is conjugated either in masculine or feminine, depending on who is talking. Using the verb to love, le'ehov, as an example, the masculine is ohev, and the feminine is ohevet. So, what do we have so far? I'm a woman, so I would use the feminine, ani ohevet. The last thing we need is an object, something you love. How about dogs? Klavim. Ani ohevet klavim. I love dogs. If I were a man, I would say, Ani ohev kervim. So it's as simple as that, and very similar to English. Now it's your turn. See if you can use these words to make the sentence, The boy loves dogs. Ohev. Kravim. Hayeled. Did you succeed? First you need the subject, the boy. In the present tense in Hebrew, the verb is determined by the number and gender of the subject. Here, we have one boy. Hayeled. Then you need to add the verb, the boy loves. This verb will be conjugated in masculine singular for the boy. That's ohev. Hayeled ohev. Finally, you add the object. Altogether, the boy loves dogs. Hayeled ohev klavim. But what if you're not a dog lover and you want to express that in Hebrew? Forming the negative in Hebrew is very easy. You just need to know one word. Lo. To make the sentence negative, you add this word before the verb. Ani lo ohevet klavim. Great! Now you know how to make a sentence in Hebrew and you know how to say it in the negative. Next, we're going to teach you one more thing. How to ask a question in Hebrew. This is really difficult. Are you ready for this? You don't have to change a word in the sentence. 
To ask a question in Hebrew, you change how you say the words in the sentence. Let's hear the boy loves dogs as a question. Let's hear the difference between the normal sentence and the question. The normal sentence is The question is The formal way to ask this as a question is to add a word to the beginning of the sentence. But this way is not used very often in speech. You say ha'im before the rest of the sentence. Ha'im ha'yeled ohev kalavim? If you want to ask who loves dogs, you replace the subject with the word for who. That word is mi. Mi ohev kalavim? Well done. Let's wrap up this lesson by recapping what we've learned. In this lesson, you learned that Hebrew sentences are formed using a subject, verb, object, or SVO word order, just like in English. Secondly, you learned how to make a sentence negative by adding one word before the verb. Lastly, you learned that asking questions in Hebrew is easy because you only have to change the way you say the sentence to ask a question. We've covered only the very basics of Hebrew grammar. If you're interested in learning more, check out our Hebrew in 3 Minutes video series. In that course, we teach you useful phrases while covering the fundamentals of Hebrew grammar, and each lesson is only 3 minutes long. In the next lesson, we'll introduce you to the basics of Hebrew writing. See you in the next lesson. Bye! Bye! Hi everybody, I'm Edith from HebrewPod101.com. Do you know how Israeli people celebrate New Year's Day? In this lesson, you'll learn some important phrases about the Hebrew New Year and some valuable cultural tips. In Hebrew, New Year's Day is called Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah. On Rosh Hashanah, Israeli people greet each other by saying Shana Tova. Shana Tova. This means Happy New Year. When you meet someone for the first time in the new year, be sure to greet them with this phrase. In Israel, New Year's Day also has a nickname. Yom Din. Yom Din. This means the Day of Judgment. On this day, people are judged on what they did in the previous year and then they predict what will happen in the coming year. The custom most associated with the festival is the shofar. Between holiday prayers, the shofar is blown loudly. The shofar is made from a ram's horn, and the noise it makes, which sounds like crying, opens the heart and reminds people how important this day really is. Israeli people also celebrate the holiday with special events and customs. The most popular one is Tashlich. Tashlich. This is a ritual performed on Rosh Hashanah. In Israel, people do not celebrate New Year's Day on the same day that many countries do. Israel uses a Hebrew calendar alongside the Gregorian calendar. The Hebrew year begins on the 1st of Tishrei. And on that day, people celebrate Rosh Hashanah, the holiday marking the beginning of the new year. This day differs each year as it does not match exactly with the Gregorian calendar. Let's wrap up this lesson by recapping what you've learned. Listen to the words and repeat after me. New Year's Day Rosh Hashanah Rosh Hashanah Happy New Year Shana Tova Shana Tova Day of Judgment Yom Din
יום דין. A ritual performed on Rosh Hashanah. תשליך. תשליך. Well done! Here's a fun fact. Do you know why it is customary to eat apples and honey on Rosh Hashanah? On Rosh Hashanah, it is customary to dip slices of apple, or tapuach, in honey, and greet each other by saying that we shall be renewed with a good and sweet year. Or in Hebrew, שתתחדש עלינו שנה טובה ומתוקה. So, in other words, we are asking that the following year will be as good as the sweet taste of apples and honey. You just learned how Israeli people celebrate New Year's Day and some important facts about the holiday. And if you want to learn Hebrew twice as fast, just click in the link in the description and download tons of PDF lessons for free. I'll see you next time. Toda raba! Celebrate. Can I go to sleep? <laughs>
you will recognize the Shva vowel by the two vertical dots underneath the consonant. In Hebrew, many words contain a Shva vowel. There are three different kinds of Shva vowels. The first kind is a short E-like sound. Le. The second is a full stop on the consonant it's underneath. Lehitlabesh. And the third is a move to the next consonant without a vowel. Tucha. The resulting combination of consonants often feels unnatural to learners of Hebrew. Kvisa. Instead of properly combining these letters, new speakers often put a short vowel between the two. In order to correct this problem, Hebrew students should practice these special letter combinations. Listen to the examples. Gdola. Ktana. Zman. Number two, the Hebrew letter resh. This is a problematic letter for learners of Hebrew, particularly for English speakers, because this R sound does not exist in English. The Hebrew R sound is similar to the German or French R. Unlike the English R, which is pronounced with the tip of the tongue at the front of the mouth, the Hebrew R is pronounced using the back of the tongue with a slight roll. You can think of it like gargling air at the back of your throat. Listen to the following examples. Kar. Rishon. Horim. We'll teach you how to pronounce this sound in lesson six. Number three, misplacing stress. A common mistake for new speakers of Hebrew is the misplacement of stress. In the beginning, most foreign speakers model their stress patterns after their native language. Correcting this is very easy because most Hebrew words are stressed on the last syllable. Pay attention to the stress pattern in the following Hebrew words. Bgadim. Yalda. Lilmod. When words aren't stressed on the last syllable, they are part of a very specific group of words, all containing a similar stress pattern. Medaberet. Sefer. Tapuach. We'll teach you how to speak Hebrew with the correct stress in lesson eight. Number four, foreign words in Hebrew. When you see a word you recognize from your own language in Hebrew, your first instinct is to pronounce it like it is in your own language. However, many foreign words in Hebrew have been modified to have different stress patterns. They may even use different sounds altogether. Pay attention to how native speakers pronounce these words, and you'll learn them quickly. Listen to Yara. Universita. Televisia. Sandwich. Number five. While this letter is usually difficult for foreign speakers to pronounce correctly in the beginning, it is also one that many people perfect with a good amount of practice. This is a guttural H pronounced at the back of the throat. It has a bad reputation because it sounds as though you're bringing up phlegm from your throat. It's possible that non-native speakers are afraid to make this sound, and this is why it has become known as a difficult Hebrew letter to pronounce. There's no need to be afraid of this letter because this sound is part of what gives Hebrew its uniqueness. Listen and repeat alongside Yada. Cheder. Chavera. Bachar. Noach. Practice often, and you'll be sure to master this elusive sound in no time. Now you know the top five Hebrew pronunciation mistakes to avoid. Try to be careful so that you don't make the same mistakes. In the next lesson, we'll start learning vowel sounds in Hebrew. What's your biggest challenge with Hebrew pronunciation? Is it one of these top five mistakes? Let us know in the comments. Stick with us and you'll overcome it quickly. See you in the next Ultimate Hebrew Pronunciation Guide lesson. Hi everyone, my name is Yara. Welcome to Top 25 Hebrew Adjectives. So, let's begin. Tov, good. Aglida is not mamash tova. This ice cream is really good. Nehedal, wonderful. For the word wonderful, we have another word in Hebrew, um, which is maybe more similar to the word in English because it has the word wonder in it. And this is nifla. So nifla and nehedal, uh, they have a very similar meaning. You can use each of them for the word wonderful. Hakuncert ayan nehedal. 
or הקונצרט היה נפלא, which means the concert was wonderful. רע, bad. אה, הפלאפל הזה לא רע בכלל. This falafel is not bad at all. No falafel is bad. צעיר, young. עכשיו אני בת 30, אבל פעם הייתי צעירה. Now I'm 30 years old, but once I was young. חדש, new. יש לי תספורת חדשה. I got a new haircut. ישן, old. You can't um, say it about old people. It's only about uh, old objects, like an old car or an old book. אני אוהבת ריח של ספרים ישנים. I love the smell of old books. ארוך, long. אבטר היה ארוך מדי. אבטר was too long. ראשון, first. Fun fact, in Hebrew you don't have names for the days of the week, you just call them first day, second day, third day. The first day, Sunday, is called Yom Rishon. הוא הגיע למקום הראשון בתחרות. He came in first in the competition. אחרון, last. בסוף השבוע האחרון נסעתי לירושלים. Last weekend I went to Jerusalem. מוקדם, early. אני שונאת להתעורר מוקדם. I hate waking up early. מאוחר, late. הוא הגיע מאוחר מדי. He arrived too late. קצר, short. הייתם פעם בפסטיבל הסרטים הקצרים של תל אביב? Have you ever been in Tel Aviv's short films festival? רחוק, far. הבית שלי רחוק מתחנת הרכבת. My house is far from the train station. מעט, few, or Little, if you talk about quantity. מעט מאוד אנשים הגיעו למסיבה. Very few people came to the party. That's a really sad sentence. הרבה. Many or a lot. בקיץ יש הרבה אנשים בחופים של תל אביב. In the summer there are many people at the beaches of Tel Aviv. חשוב. Important. האירוע הזה חשוב לי מאוד. This event is very important to me. יפה, beautiful. באביב הגליל ממש יפה. In spring time the Galilee is really beautiful. קטן, small. העיר הזאת קטנה מדי בשביל שנינו. This town is too small for the two of us. Beware. גדול, big. This town is big enough for the both of us. וואו, הבניין הזה ממש גדול. וואו, this building is really big. מהר. Fast. היא נוהגת ממש מהר. She drives really fast. לאט. Slow or slowly. השיעור הזה עובר ממש לאט. This class is going by really slow. שונה. Different. השיעור הזה שונה מאוד מהשיעור הקודם. This class is very different from the last class. דומה. Similar. החדר הזה דומה מאוד לחדר ההוא. This room is very similar to that room. מנומס, פלייט. הילד הקטן הזה מנומס מאוד. This small child is very polite. נחמד, nice. Uh, you can say that about places and about people as well. And about experiences. It was nice. זה היה נחמד. איך היה הטיול? היה נחמד מאוד. How was the trip? It was very nice. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching Top 25 Hebrew Adjectives. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you on the next video. Bye! Uh oh no, someone is pressing the button. But nothing's happening. <laughs>
בעבר היו יוצאות בנות ישראל בט"ו באב לרקוד בבגדים שאולים. אתם יודעים למה? את התשובה אני אגלה לכם בסוף הסרטון. במסורת היהודית מסופר שבנות ירושלים היו יוצאות בט"ו באב לשדות ולכרמים כשהן לבושות בגדים לבנים ויוצאות במחול. הבחורים היו יוצאים אחריהן וכך היו נרקמים קשרי אהבה. למעשה, בט"ו באב התרחשו כמה אירועים חשובים במסורת היהודית, שהמכנה המשותף לכולם הוא מחילה, התחברות וחיזוק קשרים. לפי המסורת, זהו יום של אהבה בין אלוהים לעם ישראל ובין בני אדם. כיום, בישראל חוגגים את ט"ו באב כיום של אהבה. זוגות אוהבים נותנים מתנות זה לזה, מחזרים שולחים פרחים ושוקולד, והמסעדות הרומנטיות מלאות עד הלילה. מסורת מפורסמת של החג היא ליל אהבה בצמח, פסטיבל מוזיקה לילי שהיה נערך כל שנה בט"ו באב בחוף צמח שבכנרת. עבור יהודים דתיים, ט"ו באב הוא יותר מחג של אהבה רומנטית, הוא יום של שמחה ושל לימוד תורה. החל בט"ו באב ועד לסוף החורף, מקדישים זמן נוסף ללימוד התורה בשעות הלילה, כי הימים מתחילים להתקצר והלילות מתחילים להתארך. ט"ו באב מסמל גם את ההתחלה של תקופת חשבון הנפש לקראת תחילת השנה הבאה. לוח השנה העברי תואם את מחזור הירח, כך שבאמצע כל חודש, כלומר בט"ו בחודש, הירח מלא. כך, בחג האהבה היהודי, הירח מלא ומאיר במיוחד. ועכשיו אגלה לכם את התשובה על החידה מתחילת הסרטון. לפי המסורת היהודית, בט"ו באב היו יוצאות בנות ישראל לרקוד בבגדים שאולים. אתם יודעים למה? הבגדים היו שאולים כדי שלא יוכלו להבחין מי עשירה ומי ענייה, ולא לבייש אף אחת. איך היה השיעור? למדתם משהו מעניין? איך חוגגים את האהבה בתרבות שלכם? כתבו לנו תגובה באתר hebrewpod101.com. נתראה בשיעור הבא! Hi everyone, do you know how to say I love you in Hebrew? In this lesson, you'll learn three different ways to say it. Let's start with how to express your feelings to your loved one. אני אוהב אותך. אני אוהב אותך. אני אוהב אותך. Or, if you want to explain those butterflies in your stomach, you can say אני דלוק עלייך. אני דלוק עלייך. אני דלוק עלייך. And when you feel that I love you is not enough, you can say מילים לא יכולות לתאר את האהבה שלי אליך. מילים לא יכולות לתאר את האהבה שלי אליך. מילים לא יכולות לתאר את האהבה שלי אליך. You just learned three different ways to say I love you in Hebrew. And if you're interested in learning more, don't forget to download your free Romance and Love Cheat Sheet, which includes romantic words, compliments, and pickup lines. Check out the description below and go to hebrewpod101.com now. See you next time. Hi everyone, welcome to Top Hebrew Words. My name is Yara and today our top words will be 15 favorite words chosen by fans, which is even more fun than usual. So I am genuinely excited to find out what you chose. So let's start. Ahava, love. Ahava is the noun and the verb is Le'ehov, to love. Uh, you can use it. Um, to describe your love for people, animals, clothes, or anything. האהבה הכי גדולה שלי היא חתולים. My biggest love is cats. Oh, don't worry, I like you too. אין בעיה, no problem. Okay, for example, in the very Israeli phrase, אתה יכול לעשות לי טובה? אין בעיה. Can you do me a favor? No problem. אל תדאג, don't worry. אה, אל תדאג, it'll be okay. For example, אל תדאג, טיפלתי בזה. Don't worry, I took care of it. אימא, mother, 
we don't have a mother mom thing. It's always אימא. תראי אימא, אני ביוטיוב. Look mom, I'm on YouTube. היי! אני מצטער. I'm sorry. אני מצטער. Or for a female speaker, אני מצטערת. I'm sorry. אני מצטערת ששפכתי עלייך את כוס הקפה שלי. I'm sorry I spilled my coffee on you. שמח. Happy. יום הולדת שמח. Happy birthday. For a female it will be שמחה. מיטה. Bed. יורד גשם בחוץ, אז אני רוצה להישאר במיטה כל היום. It's raining outside, so I want to stay in bed all day long. להתראות. See you. So you say it when you part with somebody. Okay, להתראות. Which literally means something like to see each other. להתראות בפעם הבאה. See you next time. כבוד. Respect. כבוד is the noun, but you can also use it as a verb. לכבד. To respect someone. There is this uh, iconic Israeli movie from the 70s, 70s or 80s, uh, called Kazablan. And it was a musical, and one of the most famous songs uh, from that movie is about respect. The main line is, כולם היו יודעים אז טוב מאוד, למי יש יותר כבוד? Uh, everyone would then know very well who has the most respect. <laughs> yeah, it sounds, it sounds a bit funny, but I didn't write it, so... ללמוד, to learn. It can mean to learn something new, it can mean to uh, study, and it can also mean what you do in school. Like, in English you would ask what university do you go to, and in Hebrew you would ask באיזו אוניברסיטה את לומדת? אתה לומד, which means what university do you learn in. So, yeah. שפה, language. שפה also means a lip. And another word for language in Hebrew is לשון, which also means tongue. איזו שפה את רוצה ללמוד? What language do you want to learn? גדול. Awesome. גדול. Awesome. Uh, גדול literally means big or large, but you say it as awesome, yeah. גדול. איך היה בהופעה? היה גדול. Uh, how was the show? Awesome. It was awesome. Bis. Bite. A very useful word is the word bis, which means a bite. אפשר לקבל bis מהפלאפל שלך? Can I have a bite of your falafel? Be generous. Give people a bite of your falafel. חירות. Freedom. Uh, freedom has two words. חופש. And חירות. You can use the word חופש for a vacation from school, but חירות is a much bigger word. And you can hear it a lot in Pesach, in Passover, in the term לצאת מעבדות לחירות, to go from slavery to freedom. שלום, peace. שלום means peace. It can be used as hello, and it, it, it is used mostly as hello. When I was a little girl, there was a famous children's song uh, named Shalom Himila Shimushit. Shalom is a useful word, which is nice. This is it. These were the 15 top Hebrew words that you chose, and thank you for that. So don't forget to check out the website, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye! <laughs> In this video, you'll learn 20 of the most common words and phrases in Hebrew. Hi everybody, my name is Edit. Welcome to the 800 Core Hebrew Words and Phrases video series. This series will teach you the 800 most common words and phrases in Hebrew. But there's a twist. With each new lesson in this series, we'll include the previous lessons at the end. So, after you've learned the new words and phrases, stick around and review what you learned in previous lessons. Reviewing is one of the most important parts of learning a language. You can also get the full list right now at HebrewPod101.com. 
Click the link in the description to access more example sentences, create your own flashcard deck, and finally master Hebrew. Okay, let's get started. First is Kelev, dog. Kelev, Kelev, dog. Layeled yesh Kelev Mahmad. The boy has a pet dog. La yeled yesh kelev mahmad. Khatul. Cat. Khatul. Kha tul. Cat. Ha khatul betoch hakova. The cat is in the hat. החתול בתוך הכובע. אוגר. hamster. אוגר. אוגר. hamster. אוגרים אוהבים לישון במהלך היום. hamsters like to sleep during the day. אוגרים אוהבים לישון במהלך היום. חמים warm חמים חמים warm לעיתים קרובות אנו משחקים בקלפים בערבי קיץ חמימים. We often play cards on a warm summer evening. לעיתים קרובות אנו משחקים בקלפים בערבי קיץ חמימים. גשם rain גשם גשם rain הגשם יורד על הרחוב. The rain is falling on the street. הגשם יורד על הרחוב. עגבניה tomato עגבניה עגבניה tomato חתכתי עגבניה. I sliced a tomato. חתכתי עגבניה. תות. strawberry. תות. תות. strawberry. אפשר לקנות תותים כל השנה. אבל הם הכי טעימים בקיץ. You can buy strawberries all year round, but they taste best in summer. אפשר לקנות תותים כל השנה, אבל הם הכי טעימים בקיץ. דובדבן Cherry דובדבן. דובדבן. צ'רי. האירוע הזה היה הדובדבן שבקצפת. This event was the cherry on my cream. האירוע הזה היה הדובדבן שבקצפת. ילד. Child. ילד. ילד. child. הילד מטייל עם הכלב. The child is walking with the dog. הילד מטייל עם הכלב. 
חבר. friend. חבר. ח ו ר. friend. בילינו הלילה עם החברים שלנו. We spend time with our friends tonight. בילינו הלילה עם החברים שלנו. מבוגר. אדולט. מבוגר. מבוגר. אדולט. לפעמים זה לא כל כך כיף להיות מבוגר. Sometimes being an adult just isn't very fun. לפעמים זה לא כל כך כיף להיות מבוגר. אופניים בייסקל אופניים או פ נ ים בייסקל אופניים הם דרך נוחה להסתובב בעיר. The bicycle is a convenient way to get around the city. אופניים הם דרך נוחה להסתובב בעיר. אוטו car אוטו או טו car אין לי אוטו I don't have a car. אין לי אוטו. אופנוע. מוטרסייקל. אופנוע. אופנוע. מוטרסייקל. אופנועים הם מהירים. Motorcycles are fast. אופנועים הם מהירים. טוסטוס, סקוטר. טוסטוס. טוס, טוס. סקוטר. לרכב על טוסטוס בעיר זה נוח. Riding a scooter in the city is convenient. לרכב על טוסטוס בעיר זה נוח. סירה. בוט. סירה. סירה. בוט. הסירה שטה במים. The boat is moving through the water. הסירה שטה במים. מדוזה. Jellyfish. מדוזה. מדוזה. Jellyfish. המדוזה שוחה באוקיינוס. The jellyfish is swimming in the ocean. המדוזה שוחה באוקיינוס. לובסטר. 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 הלובסטר נמצא על האבן. The lobster is on the rock. הלובסטר נמצא על האבן. סרטן. קראב. סרטן. סרטן. קראב. אני אוהב לאכול סרטנים טריים. I like fresh crab. אני אוהב 
לאכול, סרטנים, טריים. צו, טרו, צו, צו, טרו. צו הים שוחה בים. The sea turtle is swimming in the sea. צו הים שוחה בים. Well done! In this lesson you expanded your vocabulary and learned 20 new useful words. Click the link in the description and sign up for free at hebrewpod101.com to get access to the full list of vocabulary you need for daily life conversations. You also get example sentences, custom flashcard decks, and more learning resources. See you next time. Shalom! Shalom, אני יאנה. Hi everybody, I'm Yana. Welcome to HebrewPod101.com's Ivrit בשלוש דקות. The fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Hebrew. In the last lesson, we learned the phrase סליחה, את מדברת אנגלית, or סליחה, אתה מדבר אנגלית. Excuse me, do you speak English? We mentioned the word סליחה, which means excuse me in Hebrew. In this lesson, we are going to learn how to use סליחה and other words when apologizing in Hebrew. סליחה is a very common word and can be used in many situations. We can use סליחה in both formal and informal occasions, such as when we are ordering something in bars or restaurants. For example, סליחה, קפה אחד בבקשה. Excuse me, one coffee please. סליחה, קפה אחד בבקשה. Do you remember what בבקשה means? We can also use it when asking a question. סליחה, איפה רחוב דיזינגוף? Excuse me, where is דיזינגוף street? Sometimes we also hear people say, סליחה, um, which means, excuse me, um, when we want to draw somebody's attention. Also, in a situation when you want to make your way through a crowd, for example, סליחה is used. Israeli people use סליחה also for apologizing. For example, if you accidentally bump into a person while making your way through that crowd. We also use the word אני מצטער or אני מצטערת if you really want to apologize. You also might hear this phrase translated as forgive me or I'm sorry in English. אני מצטערת אני מצטערת If you're a woman and אני מצטער. אני מצטער, if you are a man. The phrase אני מצטער, or אני מצטערת, has a deeper meaning of apology than סליחה, although both mean I'm sorry. אני is I am, regardless of your gender, but the verb be sorry changes according to your gender. So מצטערת is I'm sorry. or I apologize if it's a woman, and אני מצטער if it's a man. If you feel really, really bad about something and want to deepen the apology even more, you can just add מאוד to your apology, which simply means very much. We already used it in the lesson about self-introductions. Remember? שלום, אני יאנה, נעים מאוד. You can also add מאוד to get אני מאוד מצטערת. אני מאוד מצטערת for a woman or אני מאוד מצטער אני מאוד מצטער for a man. It simply translates as I'm really sorry into English. But please remember that you cannot use מאוד with סליחה. Now it's time for Yana's insights. If you are not sure about what will be the proper phrase to use as an apology, It's always your safest bet to simply use סליחה. In this way, Israeli people will definitely appreciate your politeness. Are you able to count in Hebrew? In the next lesson, we will learn the numbers in Hebrew from 1 to 10. 
Hint, we already learned how to say one in this class. I'll be waiting for you in our next Ivrit Beshalosh Dakot lesson. להתראות ועד הפעם הבאה. Hi everybody, Yana here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer some of your most common Hebrew questions. The question for this lesson is, how can you possibly read Hebrew if it doesn't have any vowels? The simple answer to this question is that people who are fluent in Hebrew know which vowels go with different words. For someone who knows any language well, it's really not as hard as it sounds. Try it. Here's a famous quote in English translation, which the vowels removed. Take a minute to read this. Can you figure it out? That which is hateful to you, do not do to your fellow. Was it easier than you thought? Most English speakers don't practice this skill much, but imagine if you did this all the time. In reality, there are a few characters used sometimes to indicate vowel sounds in Hebrew, and even native speakers use them. I'll explain more about this in a later lesson. You now know how native speakers can read Hebrew without vowels. But what about Hebrew learners? There are a couple systems available to help non-native or beginner speakers read Hebrew text. The most common of these is the Nikud. Here's an example. Do you see these dots and marks? They represent the vowel sounds and are called Nikud. We go over this system in more detail in our Hebrew Alphabet Made Easy series. But for now, take comfort that there is help. There is also a number of system of Roman transliteration. These almost always include vowels to help you read. For example, the sentence above can be read Toch mispar shavuot, achanut misgera. All beginner materials at HebrewPod101.com include this kind of romanization. How was it? Pretty interesting, right? Do you have any more questions? Leave them in the comments below and I'll try to answer them. Lehitraot! Hi everybody, I'm Edith from HebrewPod101.com. Do you know how to say thank you in Hebrew? In this lesson, you'll learn three different ways to say thank you and how to respond. Let's start with the easiest one. Toda. Toda. It means thank you. If you want to show your sincere appreciation for something, say this phrase. Toda raba. Toda. Rabba. The word Rabba means a lot, so Toda Rabba means thank you very much. It expresses a deeper appreciation for some personal kindness. What if you want to address the recipient when saying thank you? Here's the way to say it. Toda Rabba Lach. Toda Rabba Lach. When addressing to a woman, Simply add the word lach. To a man, say toda raba lecha. Lach and lecha means to you. So it literally means thanks to you. Now you know three different ways to say thank you in Hebrew. But how do you respond if someone thanks you? If someone thanks you in Hebrew, simply say bevakasha. Bevakasha. It means you're welcome. Let's wrap up this lesson by recapping what we've learned. Listen to the expression and repeat after me. Thank you. Toda. Toda. Thank you so much. Toda raba. Toda. 
תודה רבה. The polite way to say thank you to a woman, תודה רבה לך. תודה רבה לך. The polite way to say thank you to a man, תודה רבה לך. תודה רבה לך. And to respond, just say, בבקשה. בבקשה. Well done! If you're not sure about which one to say, just say, תודה. This can be used with anyone, anywhere, and at any time. You just learned three different ways to say thank you and how to respond in Hebrew. And if you really want to become fluent and speak Hebrew from the very first lesson, go to hebrewpod101.com. I'll see you next time. תודה רבה. Hi everybody, Yana here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer some of your most common Hebrew questions. The question for this lesson is, Just what is the difference between biblical and modern Hebrew? Now, you may be attracted to Hebrew for any number of reasons. Perhaps you want to communicate with friends or family, or maybe you've interested in studying the many religious and classical texts written in Hebrew. Depending on your reasons for learning Hebrew, you may end up learning one of two very different languages. Biblical or classical Hebrew was an ancient language that first emerged in the 10th century BC. Over the next centuries, the ancient Hebrew people used it to communicate and to take a record of their history, religion, philosophy, poetry and culture. A portion of this literary record formed the basis of Hebrew scriptures and also what came to be called the Bible. During the Roman period, the language evolved beyond recognition and later fell out of use in daily life, but it lived on in religious contexts. Hebrew experienced a revival in the late 19th century as part of the larger Zionist movement. Thanks to the effort of Eliezer ben Yehuda, who prepared the first modern Hebrew dictionary, people started using Hebrew again to communicate with one another as they went about their lives. But because of the influence of European languages, Hebrew changed. Grammar, pronunciation, vocabulary, not a single aspect of the language went untouched by the transformation. And like any other modern language, Hebrew continues to change. So, for example, the word I or me in biblical Hebrew is anochi. This same word has changed in modern Hebrew to ani. Besides this change in pronunciation, modern Hebrew got a lot of new words from languages like French and German. For example, the word concrete or beton came from French, while schnitzel or schnitzel came from German. And of course, there are new words to describe things that did not exist in ancient times, like electricity, chashmal, computer, machshev, car, mechonit, telefon, telefon. At this point in history, someone familiar only with biblical Hebrew would not be able to communicate very well with contemporary native speakers. At the same time, a modern Hebrew speaker cannot easily read the Bible. How was it? Pretty interesting, right? Do you have any more questions? Leave them in the comments below and I'll try to answer them. Lehitraot! In this video, you'll learn 20 of the most common words and phrases in Hebrew. Hi everybody, my name is Edith. Welcome to the 800 Core Hebrew Words and Phrases video series. This series will teach you the 800 most common words and phrases in Hebrew. But there's a twist. With each new lesson in this series, we'll include the previous lessons at the end. So, after you've learned the new words and phrases, Stick around and review what you've learned in previous lessons. Reviewing is one of the most important parts of learning a language. 
You can also get the full list right now at hebrewpod101.com. Click the link in the description to access more example sentences, create your own flashcard deck, and finally master Hebrew. Okay, let's get started. First is Shalom. Hello. Shalom. Shalom. Hello. He omeret shalom. She is saying hello. He omeret shalom. Slicha. Excuse me. Slicha. Slicha. Excuse me. Slicha. Raita et akelev sheli? Excuse me. Have you seen my dog? Slicha. Raita et akelev sheli? Ani mitztaeret. I'm sorry. Ani mitztaeret. Ani mitztaeret. I'm sorry. Ani mitztaeret. Hu lo nimtza kan karega. I'm sorry. He is not here right now. Ani mitztaeret. Hu lo nimtza kan karega. Laila tov. Good night. Laila tov. Laila tov. Good night. Kshat holechet lishon, at yichola leagid li laila tov. When you go to sleep, you can tell me good night. Kshat holechet lishon. את יכולה להגיד לי לילה טוב. נעים מאוד. Nice to meet you. נעים מאוד. נעים מאוד. Nice to meet you. נעים מאוד להכיר אותך, אדוני. Nice to meet you, sir. נעים מאוד להכיר אותך, אדוני. מה שלומך? How are you? מה שלומך? מה שלומך? How are you? שלום, מה שלומך? Hello, how are you? שלום, מה שלומך? כן. Yes. כן. כן. Yes. כן. אני ישראלית. Yes, I'm Israeli. כן, אני ישראלית. לא. No. לא. לא. No. אוי, לא. השארתי משהו על הקיריים. Oh, no. I left something on the stove. Oi lo. Hishaarti mashehu al hakiraim. Toda. Thank you. Toda. Toda. 
Thank you. תודה על העזרה. Thank you for your help. תודה על העזרה. אני... I am... אני... אני. I'm... אני ליסה. I am Lisa. אני ליסה. שלום. Goodbye. שלום. שלום. Goodbye. שלום. להתראות בקרוב. Goodbye. See you soon. שלום. להתראות בקרוב. רע. Bad. רע. רע. Bad. האיש רע. The man is bad. האיש רע. טוב. Good. טוב. טוב. Good. היא בן אדם טוב. She is a good person. He, בן אדם, טוב. יפה. Pretty. יפה. יפה. Pretty. את יפה מאוד. You are very pretty. את יפה מאוד. מכוער. Ugly. מכוער. מכוער. Ugly. הכלב הזה מכוער מאוד. That is a very ugly dog. הכלב הזה מכוער מאוד. קל. Easy. קל. קל. Easy. המבחן היה קל. The test was easy. המבחן היה קל. קשה. Difficult. קשה. קשה. Difficult. אנגלית היא שפה קשה. English is a difficult language. אנגלית היא שפה קשה. קרוב. Near. קרוב. קרוב. Near. אני גרה קרוב לאוניברסיטה. I live near the university. אני גרה קרוב לאוניברסיטה. 
רחוק. far רחוק. רחוק. far התחנה נמצאת רחוק מכאן. The station is far from here. התחנה נמצאת רחוק מכאן. קטן. small. קטן. קטן. small. המכונית קטנה, אבל היא עוצמתית מאוד. The car is small, but it's very powerful. המכונית קטנה, אבל היא עוצמתית מאוד. Well done! In this lesson, you expanded your vocabulary and learned 20 new useful words. Click the link in the description and sign up for free. at hebrewpod101.com to get access to the full list of vocabulary you need for daily life conversations. You'll also get example sentences, custom flashcard decks, and more learning resources. See you next time. Shalom. Shalom, I'm Yana. Welcome to hebrewpod101.com's Aleph Bet Bekale Kalut. the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn the Hebrew alphabet, the Aleph Bet. In the last lesson, we learned the sixth Hebrew letter, Vav, and three new Nikud. Do you remember how to write David and uncle? What about electric water heater? In this lesson, we will learn two new Hebrew letters. So let's move on with the seventh letter, Zayin. The sound is Z. Let's write it in handwriting first. Does it look familiar? You might be reminded of the third letter, Gimel, in handwriting. Yes, you are right. They are the mirror images of each other. But don't get confused between them. Gimel faces this way. Zayin faces this way. Okay, how about the print version? Fortunately, this one will be hard to confuse with the print version of Gimel. Even though they are pretty different in print, make sure you don't write Zayin and Vav in too similar a way. Let's see the difference. Vav, Zayin. Zvuv is a fly in Hebrew. Zvuv. And in print? Zvuv. You can easily remember this word since the fly makes this sound. Zvzvz. Let's move on. If you write Zayin with a comma on the left side, it will sound like Z, as in the word journal or collage. First you write Zayin and then add the comma on the upper left side. In print, Usually, the letter Z is used for foreign words like jacket, a jacket, journal, a journal, and so forth. Now we move on to the eighth letter, Chet. This has the sound of Ch, and it is written like this. For the handwriting, keep the corners round, and in print, Chet. Almost the same, right? Always the print version will have sharper corners than the handwriting version. Ach is a brother in Hebrew. Ach. The pronunciation is important. Try to pronounce it more glottally from your throat. Chava is a farm. Chava. Here the handwriting and the print versions are almost the same. Let's write them. Chava. In print.
Chava. Now it's time for Yana's insights. When writing Hebrew, Aleph Bet always start from the top, both in hand and print writing. In this lesson, we studied two new Hebrew letters, Zayn and Chet, with the variation of Z. Did you know that you have already mastered a third of the complete Hebrew Aleph Bet and the Nikud system? Good job. But how do you write good in Hebrew? In the next lesson, we will learn this and two new letters plus one Nikud. See you then. Lehitraot. Hi everyone, my name is Yara and today we're going to talk about top Hebrew verbs, which are very useful verbs that will help you in everyday life uh, in your next visit in Israel. Yay! Lelechet, to go. Lelechet uh, also means to walk. Lelechet baregel, to walk by foot. So you can use it as to go on a trip. Lelechet letiyul, to go home. Lelechet abaita. Lavo. To come. Lavo, to come. Like, are you coming to the party? At Ba'ala Mesiba. Are you planning to come to the party? At Matachnenet Lavo La Mesiba. Come to the party, it'll be fun. Lehagid, to say. Lehagid, Ani Rotsa Lehagid Lachmashu. I want to tell you something. You can only use this verb in this form, at least in modern Hebrew. Lehagid, to say. Uh, you can't use it as I said. It doesn't work like that. Only in the infinitive form. Lehagid, to say. Lishmoa, to hear. Ba'erev, afshar lishmoa et atzfardeim. In the evening, you can hear the frogs. Lishmoa. La'asot, to do, to make. La'asot means to do, but it also means to make. Like la'asot balagan, to make a mess. Alta balagan, don't make a mess. Or like, don't make a big deal. Alta sein yan. Lakachat, to take. Uh, you can use that, like in English, to take medicine or to take something from one place to another, to take it back. Hayali keevrosh, az lakachti kadur. I had a headache, so I took a pill. Lirzot, to want. When I was a little girl, I wanted to be a dancer. Kshaiti ktana, ratsiti liot rakdanit. Ratsiti is the first person past tense of lirtsot. Lechakot, to wait. Like to wait in line. Lechakot bator. Chikiti shaot bator la falafel. I waited for hours in the line for the falafel. Oh, don't worry, it never happened. Liknot, to buy. אין לי כסף, אז אני לא יכולה לקנות כלום. I don't have money, so I can't buy anything. <laughs> לדעת, to know. How could I know? איך הייתי יכולה לדעת? להיות, to be. כשאני אהיה גדולה, אני רוצה להיות רופאה. When I grow up, I want to be a doctor. להיות. לתת, to give. רציתי לתת לך מתנה. I wanted to give you a present. Lachshov, to think. You should try thinking about other people too. Tatsarich lenasot lachshov gam al anashim acherim. Lehargish, to feel. Did you feel the earthquake? Hergasht et reidata adama? Lehov, to love. I love cats. Ani ohevet chatulim. I love other stuff too, but. Like cats are my favorite thing in the world, so... אני אוהבת חתולים. For a male speaker, it would be אני אוהב חתולים. Because who doesn't love cats? Yes! לעזוב. To leave. To let go. אני לא רוצה לעזוב את הבית. I don't want to leave home. אל תעזוב את המעקה. Don't let go of the handrail. לעזוב. לעבוד. To work. I don't like working on weekend. אני לא אוהבת לעבוד בסופי שבוע. Nobody does. לנסות, to try. תמשיכי לנסות, בסוף זה יעבוד. 
Keep trying. Eventually it will work. Hopefully. לקבל. To receive. אני אוהבת לקבל מתנות. I love receiving presents. לקבל is to receive, but it can also sometimes mean to get something. To get what you deserve. לקבל מה שמגיע לך. In Hebrew you can also say לקבל מכות, which means to get beat up. And it literally means to receive beating. Can you say that? That's like, whatever. לדבר. To speak. תפסיק לדבר, אני לא יכולה לשמוע אותך כבר. Stop talking, I can't hear you anymore. לחפש. To search. I've been searching for my glasses for days. אני מחפשת את המשקפיים שלי כבר כמה ימים. למצוא. To find. If you ever watched any Disney movie, you'll know this sentence. למצוא אהבת אמת. To find true love. Uh, obviously, you can also use it to find, you know, objects. <laughs> uh, to find your glasses. למצוא את המשקפיים שלך. Yeah, I don't do that very often. I look for them a lot, I don't find them very often. להתקשר. To call. This word literally means to contact, but these days, like in modern Hebrew, you only use it to say to call someone on the phone. ניסיתי להתקשר אלייך, אבל לא ענית. I tried calling you, but she didn't answer. Like, if you call someone on the street, hey, that's, that's not להתקשר. להתקשר is only on the phone. לאכול. To eat. מה אתה רוצה לאכול? What do you want to eat? And while you're in Israel, make sure to go and have falafel. Go eat falafel. לכו לאכול falafel. לישון. To sleep. לילה טוב, אני הולכת לישון. Good night, I'm going to sleep. Okay, good night, I'm going to sleep. Yes. Sleep. לישון. Okay, that was the end. Thank you so much for watching Top Hebrew Verbs. Which verb do you use the most? Tell us in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe. Bye. Ah, oh, now I get it. It's so hot in here. Shalom, I'm Yana. Hi everybody, I'm Yana. Welcome to HebrewPod101.com's Ivrit B'Shalosh Dakot, the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Hebrew. In the last lesson, we learned the numbers from 1 to 10. Have you forgotten? Here, I'll tell you again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Do you remember how to say your phone number? And now let's continue from 11. 11. 1. 12. 12. 12. 13. 13. 14. 14. 15. 15. 16. שש עשרה, שבע עשרה, שבע עשרה, שמונה עשרה, שמונה עשרה, תשע עשרה, תשע עשרה, and finally we have עשרים. עשרים. אוקיי, now repeat after me. I'll say the numbers and give you time to repeat each one. אחד עשרה. שתים עשרה, שלוש עשרה, ארבע עשרה, חמש עשרה, שש עשרה, שבע עשרה, שמונה עשרה, תשע עשרה, עשרים. These numbers may seem harder to remember. but you really just have to memorize slight changes in pronunciation 
of 1 to 10 and just add a SRE after numbers starting from 10. Let's not stop at 20. Counting from 11 to 100 is super easy. Now I'll give you the tens. Shloshim. Shloshim. Arbaim. Arbaim. Chamishim. Chamishim. Shishim. Shishim. Shivim. Shivim. Shmonim. Shmo nim. Tishim. Tishim. Mea. Mea. While you have to memorize a few of these numbers, there are a couple of tricks that will make memorizing them incredibly easy. All the tens are basically the numbers 1 to 10 with slight changes, but always end up with im. For example, shalosh is 3 and Shloshim is 30. Shalosh. Shloshim. Let's take another example. Do you remember what Chamesh is? 5. So to make it 50, you change it to Chamishim. Chamesh. Chamishim. And Shmone will make Shmonim. Shmone. Shmonim. The last thing to learn today is how to form compound numbers above 20. This is also super easy. Take the tens and simply add the numbers you learned in the previous lesson. But don't forget to add V when you're making compound numbers over 20. V means end. So basically, if you count 22, you say Esrim V Stein meaning 20 and 2. It is very important, so don't forget that. Let's try it out. How would you say 56 in Hebrew? Let's take it step by step. 50 is chamishim, and then add the tiny V and shesh, 6. Chamishim ve shesh. After only two lessons, you are now able to count to 100 in Hebrew. In the next lesson, we are going to put your number knowledge to use. Do you have all the skills you need to go shopping in Israel? If not, I'll be waiting for you in our next Ivrit Beshalosh Dakot lesson. Lehitraot ve'ad ha'pam ba'a. Shalom, Ani Yana. Hi everybody, I'm Yana. Welcome to HebrewPod101.com's Ivrit Beshalosh Dakot, the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Hebrew. In the last lesson, we learned some words used when apologizing in Hebrew, including slicha and Ani Mitzta'eret, Ani Mitzta'er. In this lesson, we are going to learn numbers in Hebrew. Yes, numbers, misparim, from 1 to 10 and you are going to learn them in only three minutes. Beshalosh Dakot. You already know the first number from last lesson and can make a full sentence. Do you remember? Kafe Echad Bevakasha. Ready? Let's start. Echad. Echad. Shtaim. Shtaim. Shalosh. Shalosh. Arba. Arba, Chamesh, Chamesh, Shesh, Shesh, Sheva, Sheva, Shmone, Shmone, Tesha, Tesha, and Eser, Eser. Okay, now repeat after me. I'll say the numbers and give you time to repeat. Each one. Ready? Echad. Shtaim. Shalosh. Arba. Chamesh. 
שש, שבע, שמונה, תשע, עשר. Great job. What is before אחד? Do you know? It's אפס. אפס. You don't have any more excuses. You can give your friends your cell phone number in Hebrew. Let's try together. We'll use the phrase המספר שלי הוא, which means my number is. המספר שלי הוא. המספר שלי הוא. שלוש שלוש שבע, אחד שתיים שתיים, ארבע תשע, שש שמונה. Can you read it by yourself? שלוש, שלוש, שבע, אחד, שתיים, שתיים, ארבע, תשע, שש, שמונה. Perfect. Now it's time for Yana's insights. When you travel in Israel, it's a good idea to start paying attention to the bus numbers, street numbers, dates, hours, and the local money, the shekel. It's the best practice to remember. You can start now, if you are at your hometown, to practice Hebrew numbers in your daily life. Do you know the Hebrew word for a hundred? In the next lesson, we are going to learn the numbers from 11 to 100 in Hebrew. Your task now is to practice the numbers we studied in this lesson. From Echad till Eser. Lehitraot ve'ada pama ba'a. Bye! Shalom, אני יאנה. Hi everybody, I'm Yana. Welcome to HebrewPod101.com's עברית בשלוש דקות. The fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Hebrew. In the last lesson, we learned the most common forms of greetings in Hebrew. Do you remember them? In this lesson, we are going to learn a very useful phrase. Do you speak English? If you find yourself in a situation where you need assistance in English, this phrase can be a lifesaver. And because you're asking it in Hebrew, you can be sure that everyone will understand what you're saying, even if the answer is no. As already mentioned in previous lessons, in Hebrew there is a difference between male and female speech. So if you want to ask a woman, say, At medaberet anglit? At medaberet anglit? In Hebrew, verbs change depending on the pronoun that is used according to the gender of both the speaker and the addressee. At, in this case, is the female pronoun for you. So the verb medaberet, which means speak, refers to a female. For example, if I said, I speak English, it will be Ani medaberet anglit. Ani, as we learned already, means I am. Ani is the only way you can say I am in Hebrew, regardless of one's gender. Then, medaberet is the female conjugation for speak, or speaking. So, אני מדברת אנגלית will be used only by a female speaker. On the other hand, if you're asking a man if he speaks English, you say, אתה מדבר אנגלית? אתה מדבר אנגלית? אתה, in this case, is the male pronoun for you. So, the verb מדבר, which means speak, refers to a man only. So, if you're a man and want to say, I speak English, it will be אני מדבר אנגלית. It is important to notice that in Hebrew the pronoun and the verb change according to female, male, and also to singular or plural of the same sentence. So basically there are four ways to say each phrase. But don't worry, we will talk more about that later. For now, please only remember that you can use both את מדברת אנגלית and אתה מדבר אנגלית only if you are addressing one person. So let's review them once again. At medaberet anglit, if you are asking a woman. And 
אתה מדבר אנגלית, if you're asking a man. Adding סליחה, excuse me, the sentence becomes even more polite. סליחה, את מדברת אנגלית? סליחה, את מדברת אנגלית? Or, סליחה, אתה מדבר אנגלית? סליחה, אתה מדבר אנגלית? The responses you will receive could be one of these three. כן, yes, כן. קצת, a little. קצת. לא, אני לא מדבר אנגלית. Or, לא, אני לא מדברת אנגלית. No, I don't speak English. לא, אני לא מדבר אנגלית. לא, אני לא מדברת אנגלית. To make every sentence negative in Hebrew, you only have to add לא before the verb, which simply means no. It's easy, isn't it? Now it's time for Yana's insights. For those of you who are not only English speakers, you can obviously use this question with any language you need. Israeli people study other European languages at school, so maybe you will get lucky. Just substitute Anglit with Rusit for Russian, Italkit for Italian, Sfaradit for Spanish, and Germanit for German. In this lesson, we'll mention the expression Slicha. But did you know that this could also be used as an apology? In the next lesson, we will learn this and other ways to apologize in Hebrew. It's never too late to show your good manners with Israeli people. I'll see you in the next Ivrit B'Shalosh Dakot lesson. Lehitraot! שלום, אני יאנה. Welcome to HebrewPod101.com's א' ב' בקלי קלות. The fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn the Hebrew alphabet. The א' ב'. In the last lesson, we'll learn the third and fourth Hebrew letters, ג' and ד'. Do you remember how to write fish? And what about roof? In this lesson, we will learn how to write the word for love in Hebrew. Are you ready? So let's start. בואו נתחיל. The fifth Hebrew letter is hey. Hey sound is ha, but it can also sound like a. Ah. You will see how it changes in a second. Let's first write it in handwriting. Hey. The print version is very similar. Hey. Make sure to keep hey curved while handwriting, but use sharp angles in print. So, as I mentioned, hey can sound like both ha and a. The word ahava uses it in both ways. When hey appears in the end of the word, it will always sound as a. Ahava is love in Hebrew. Let's try to write it down. A, pronounced ha. Remember the sound here is V, so we don't need a dot of bet. Pronounce A. Let's do it once more in handwriting. Ahava. Ahava. Isn't it a beautiful word with a beautiful curved shape? Now let's do it in print. A. Ha. Va. So if you want to add the full Nikud for this word, we need to use a new Nikud symbol, Patach. Just like Kamatz from last lesson, Patach has the sound of A. Now remember, when you write in modern Hebrew, you don't need to use the Nikud system. It is there mostly for you to read, especially when learning new vocabulary, or if you want to study the Hebrew Bible. Now let's spell Ahava with a full Nikud. Ahava. A-ha-va. Ahava. 
Here's the print version. Here you saw how the letter hey can sound in two different ways. So you already know five Hebrew letters and several words. Don't forget to practice the characters in both handwriting and print. Now it's time for Yana's insights. Doesn't hey from this lesson sound like hey in English? When you say hello to your friends? That's exactly the sound for the Hebrew letter hey. Now you can think of the letter hey when saying hello to your friends and memorize it better. In the next lesson, we will see how one word can be pronounced in three different ways in Hebrew. It may sound confusing, but remember, you'll have the Nikud to help you. See you next time. Lehitraot! Shalom, Ani Yana. Hi everybody, I'm Yana. Welcome to HebrewPod101.com's Ivrit Beshalosh Dakot, the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Hebrew. In the last lesson, we learned how to be grateful to people by saying Toda. In this lesson, we learned some of the most common greetings used in Israel. Atem Uchanim, are you ready? As bon atchil, so let's start. The most used greeting is Shalom. Shalom. We also saw it in the first lesson. Shalom simply means hi or hello. It can also mean goodbye. We use it when we meet, but also can use it when we part. Shalom means something like peace, so it makes the greeting very special. It is common to say shalom in both informal and formal situations, and at any time of the day. In the morning, you can also greet people with Boker Tov. Boker Tov which means good morning. Boker is morning, and tov is good. During the evening, we also say erev tov. Erev tov. Erev is Hebrew for evening, so erev tov means good evening. Boker tov and erev tov are used when we meet someone, but when we leave, we don't say them again. Another way to say goodbye in Hebrew is lehitraot. Le Hit, ra, ot. It is actually more common to use lehitraot than shalom when leaving. But most people in Israel just say bye. Bye! Now you can greet people in many different ways in Hebrew. Let's review them all again. When meeting people in formal and informal situations, shalom. In the morning until the afternoon we say boker tov. And in the evening, erev tov. When living in any situation, lehitraot, or simply, bye. It's easy, isn't it? Now it's time for Yana's insights. In formal situations, Israeli people commonly greet each other by shaking hands. On the other hand, if we meet someone we are very friendly with, we kiss each other on one cheek. Don't be afraid to do it with your Israeli friends. It's normal. During the next lesson, we'll learn the meaning of the phrase Ata medaber anglit, or at Medaberet Anglit? Do you already know it? We'll be waiting to talk about it with you in our next Ivrit Beshalosh Dakot lesson. Lehitraot! Bye! Shalom, Ani Yana. Welcome to HebrewPod101.com's Aleph Bet Bekalei Kalut. The fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn the Hebrew alphabet, the Aleph Bet. In the last lesson, we learned to write the most important word in Hebrew, Ahava, the word for love. Do you remember the Nikud for Ahava? If you are not feeling confident about it, review the last lesson before continuing on from here. In this lesson, we will learn one new Hebrew letter and three more Nikud. Are you ready? So let's start. Bo natril. 
The sixth letter is Vav. The sound of Vav is V or O or U. And it's written like this. That's it. Vav has only one stroke from top to the bottom. The print version is the same for Vav with only a small difference. In Hebrew, Vav is not only the name of the character, it's also a word by itself. It means a hook. Doesn't Vav look like a hook? You can write this word like this. It's just the letter Vav two times. If you want to add Nikud, it will look like this. Now we move on to the next Nikud symbol, Chirik, with the sound I, like in C. It's just one dot under the letter, I. Now you can write a very common name, one that belongs to the second and perhaps most famous king of the ancient kingdom of Israel, David. It's written with two Dalet and one Vav. The Nikud here is important, otherwise it can have different pronunciation and meaning. Let's write this word. David, and now in print. David. The next Nikud for this lesson is Shuruk, with a sound U. This is how you make Vav sound like U. For example, if we take the same letters from David and instead of Chirik, we add Shuruk, it will be Dud electric water heater. Perhaps now you can appreciate the power of learning the Nikud when you're first studying Hebrew. Let's write this word. Dud. And now in print. Dud. Notice how Shuruk goes to the left of the Vav. Seem complicated? Don't worry, we will review them all at the end of this lesson. But not before we will learn the last Nikud for today. Cholam Malay, with the sound of O. This is how you make Vav sound like O. Let's write this. D, O, D, Dod. And now in print. Dod. Notice that Cholam Malé appears above the Vav. Now, Shuruk and Cholam Malé are only written with the letter Vav and not with any other letter. Chirik, however, will appear below other letters. Now let's see all the last three examples together and make sense of them. First, we had David, Dud, and Dod. Now let's have a short quiz. I'll show you the Nikud symbol next to a letter and you have to pronounce its sound. Ready? A. U. I. O. A. Now it's time for Yana's insights. Since you will not see any Nikud in modern readings in Israel, you will have to guess by the context of the sentence which pronunciation and meaning it has. It all comes with the experience of studying Hebrew vocabulary. Another tip is when writing the letter Vav, it is important to keep the length of the stroke inside the frame. Otherwise, it becomes a different letter. But that's for later. So in this lesson, we studied the letter Vav and three Nikud in Hebrew. Chirik, Shuruk, and Cholam Malé. In the next lesson, we will learn two more Hebrew letters. Zain and Chet. See you then! Bye! Shalom, Aniyana. Welcome to HebrewPod101.com's Aleph Bet Bekalei Kalut. 
the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn the Hebrew alphabet, the Aleph Bet. Over the next 20 lessons, you'll learn everything there is to know about reading and writing Hebrew. By the end, you'll even be able to read some portions of the Hebrew Bible. Are you ready? So let's start. Bon atchil. Hebrew has only one alphabet of 22 letters, so it's super easy. Once you know this, a few variations and a simple vowel system, you will be ready to read one of the most ancient languages in the world. As you may know, the Hebrew writing system is written from right to left. At first, this may seem intimidating or confusing, but you'll get the hang of it in no time. Let's start with the first letter, Aleph. What sound does Aleph make? In Hebrew, the name of each letter starts with the sound you use to pronounce it, which means the sound of Aleph is A. Ah. It is handwritten like this. Now, in Hebrew, there are always two ways to write a letter, the written way, which is used in everyday handwriting, and the print way, which you will see in books and newspapers, on signs, and so forth. This is the written way. The print version looks like this. When Israeli kids first learn how to write, they use this print typewriting. It's useful, and as you'll see later, very easy to learn both versions of every letter. Let's do it again. Here's the written form. And here's the print form. You can now write your first letter in Hebrew. Good, let's move on. The second character is bet. The sound of bet is b, and it looks like this. Pay attention to the dot, it has to be in the middle. The print version is like this. If you leave out the dot, bet becomes vet. The sound of Vet is V, but we don't count Vet as a separate letter in the alphabet. So far, you've studied two letters of the Hebrew Aleph Bet, and you've learned three sounds. Want to write them once again? Let's do it. Okay, here is Aleph. This is handwritten. Aleph in print. And now bet, handwritten. And bet in print. Then vet, handwritten. Vet in print style. Did you know you can already write a word in Hebrew? This is Abba. Abba in Hebrew means father. It is the first word every Israeli baby says. These are the simplest phonetic sounds. Try it out. Abba in handwriting. And now the print style. Abba. Great job! In this lesson, you learn the first two letters of the Hebrew alphabet. The Aleph, Bet. You also practice your first word, in both print and writing styles. Before we move on to the next lesson, I want to introduce the Hebrew vowel system. Among 22 Hebrew letters, there are five vowels, one of which we learned in this lesson. But beside those five, there is another vowel system called Nikud. Nikud are a series of dots or points that are used to indicate vowel sounds connected to consonants. Once you have more experience reading Hebrew, you may not see these symbols so often in native texts. But if you can master them when you start learning Hebrew, it will make learning Hebrew much faster and easier. The Nikud take the form of dots, lines, 
and combinations of the two and are written in, under, on top or beside consonant letters. Sound complicated? Don't worry, we'll take it slowly and by the end of this series they will seem easy. Now it's time for Yana's insights. Have you been writing as you watch? Hope so. There is no better way to master the alphabet quickly than to write them yourself. I also recommend that you make flashcards for each letter and study them whenever you get a chance. Do you know how to write dag, the word for fish in Hebrew? It will definitely come in handy when you read a menu in Israel. And you learn that and much more in the next lesson. Lehitraot! Welcome to HebrewPod101.com's Ivrit Beshalosh Dakot, the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Hebrew. Shalom, Ani Yana, Naimod. Hi, I'm Yana. It's a pleasure to meet you. In this series, we're going to learn basic Hebrew expressions. It's super easy, and it only takes three minutes. In this lesson, you're going to learn how to introduce yourself in Hebrew. In Hebrew, there is no formal and informal language. You can use this introduction in both cases and keep it simple. However, in Hebrew, there is a difference between male and female language. Let's first see how Israeli people introduce themselves in a simple way. Shalom, Ani Yana, Naimod. Hi, I'm Yana, it's a pleasure. Shalom, Ani Yana, Naim Meod. Start by saying Shalom, Ani, then saying your name. Shalom, Ani Yana. Finally say, Naim Od. Shalom, Ani Yana, Naim Od. And now let's see the same sentence if you wish to be more specific in addressing the person you are introduced to. If you're introducing yourself to a woman, you should say, Shalom, Ani Yana, Naim Od Lehakir Otach. Hi, I'm Yana. It's a pleasure to meet you. Shalom, Ani Yana, Naim Me'od lehakir otach. If you are talking to a man, you should say, Shalom, Ani Yana, Naim me'od lehakir otcha. Hi, I'm Yana, it's a pleasure to meet you. Shalom, Ani Yana, Naim me'od lehakir otcha. So, what has changed from the previous introduction? Let's take a close look at this together. The last part of the introduction has been changed based on the gender of the person you are talking to. Shalom, Ani Yana, Naim Me'od Lehakir Otach, for a woman, versus Shalom, Ani Yana, Naim Me'od Lehakir Otcha, for a man. Ani, in this case, has not been changed, and in both cases stands for I am, regardless of your gender. The last sounds of the last word changes, however. Otach if you are talking to a woman, and otcha, if you are speaking to a man. One more time, the simple way to introduce yourself in Hebrew is Shalom, Ani Yana, Naim Me'od. In case you want to personalize the greeting, you say Shalom, Ani Yana, Naim Me'od, Lehakir Otach. Shalom, Ani Yana, Naim Me'od, Lehakir Otcha. Now it's time for Yana's insights. When you introduce yourself, it's a good habit to shake hands in Israel. If you don't want to worry about using the right word for men and women, just say Naim Me'od, as I said at the beginning of this lesson. There is no cultural importance if you add the last part to the introduction. It just makes the sentence more complete. Do you know how to say thank you in Hebrew? You will learn how to say this and many other words in the next lesson. Ada pa'am ba'ah, till next time. Hi everyone, my name is Yara and today we're going to do uh, top Hebrew phrases. These are very useful phrases, you're going to hear a lot when you come to Israel, so uh, make sure to memorize them. 
Okay, let's start. Shalom. Hello. Shalom literally means peace, but we use it also as a greeting. Shalom. Manishma. How are you? Uh, that's a very casual way of asking how are you, and it literally means what is heard. Like, yeah, like what have you been up to? What's going on with you? Manishma. Toda. Thanks. And probably the only way to say it, we don't have like thanks or thank you, it's just toda. Bevakasha. Please. Bevakasha, it means please, but it can also mean there you go. So you can say, Efshar lekabel mayim, bevakasha. Can I have water, please? And when you give someone water, you can also say, Bevakasha, there you go. Slicha, excuse me. Uh, it means excuse me or sorry. So when you like push through people in the bus, you can go, mm, Slicha, Slicha, Slicha. Uh, but when you step on someone on the bus, you can also say, Oi, Slicha, I'm sorry. Lehitraot, see you. It literally means to see each other again. So it's like, to see each other again. <laughs> uh, it's also very casual. Beseder. Okay. This is a very, very useful word. You can say it when someone asks you, how are you? Beseder. You can say it to show you understand something. When someone gives you direction, you're like, beseder. Uh, it literally means in order. Like everything's in order. Tov. Fine. Uh, most of the time it means fine. Literally, it means good, a lot like beseder. How are you? Tov. To respond to a direction, like, uh, go that way, please. Tov. Fine, I understand. al daval. You're welcome. We use it as, you're welcome, and it literally means, oh, for nothing. Thank you. Oh, al daval. It was nothing. It's maybe a bit more formal than... Bevakasha, most of the times when people say toda, you answer bevakasha. You can also answer alodaval. It's pretty much the same, though bevakasha is a bit more common. Boker tov, good morning. Boker tov, uh, which literally means good morning, and you obviously use it in the morning. Boker tov, laila tov, good night. So, yeah, good night you can say uh, when you leave a party at night, you know, you can say, okay, bye, good night, laila tov. Sohoraim tovim, good afternoon. Sohoraim tovim, good afternoon. You can definitely say that, but you don't hear it that often. It literally means good noon. Ma shimcha, what's your name? For a male, it would be ma shimcha. For a female, ma shmech, what is your name? You can also ask, Ech koreim lach, which literally means how are you called. And this is the most common way to ask. Naim lehakir, nice to meet you. Literally, I guess it would mean pleasant. It is pleasant to meet you. And you can say naim lehakir otach for a woman or naim lehakir otcha for a man. A4, where? A4 hatachana. Where is the station? Efo is very important. You should memorize this one. Ani mevin. I see. For a woman, it would be ani mevina. I understand. I see. Ani mevina. Ma hasha'a? What time is it? The literal translation would be, what is the hour? This is how you ask. Slicha, ma hasha'a? Excuse me, what time is it? Efshar bevakasha lekabel. Can I please have? Efshar bevakasha lekabel maim. Can I please have some water? And this would be the same uh, for a male speaker and for a female speaker. Efshar bevakasha lekabel. Efo hashirutim. Where is the restroom? Efo hashirutim. Where is the restroom? Shirutim is restroom. Efo hashirutim. Another one to memorize. Ani mitzta'er. I am sorry. Ani mitzta'er, or for a female speaker, ani mitzta'eret. Ani mitzta'eret lafria. I'm sorry to interrupt. Ken, yes. You can use it in any way you use yes. Yeah, use it. Be positive. Lo, no. I, 
like this word, it has a fun sound, and it was my sister's first word. Lo, no. Bali, I feel like. Bali, it's two words, Bali, and it means I feel like, I want, and you can also use it as a negative. Bali glida, I feel like ice cream, I want ice cream. Lo bali lalechet lebet asefer, I don't feel like going to school. So it's very useful. Children use it a lot, but grown-ups use it too. Die. Enough. Stop. Uh, it sounds really bad, but it's harmless. It means uh, enough or um, stop. When someone is like bugging you, poking you, like, die. Stop it. Enough. Yeah. Kama <laughs> ze ole? How much is it? Kama ze ole? How much is it? How much does it cost? Meule. Awesome. Great. I guess maybe the Hebrew equivalent of the word awesome, uh, it's meule. The masculine form is meule and the feminine is meula. Like, haofa'a uh, zot meula. This show is awesome. It's great. Ech haya tiyul? Haya meule. How was the trip? It was meule. Great. Awesome. Okay, that's it for today for Top Hebrew Phrases. Thank you so much for watching. And what is your favorite Hebrew phrase? Tell us on the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe. Bye. Phrase. <laughs> I forgot my name. Shalom, Ani Yana. Welcome to HebrewPods101.com's Aleph Bet Bekale Kalut, the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn the Hebrew alphabet, the Aleph Bet. In the last lesson, we learned the first two letters of the Aleph Bet. Do you remember them? In this lesson, we'll move on to the next couple of letters and the first Nikud symbol. So let's start. Bo Natril. The third letter of the Aleph Bet is Gimel. The sound of Gimel is G. Let's first see how to write it by hand. Gimel in handwriting. And in print it looks like this. Gimel. They look quite different, don't they? But the good news is that you already can write another Hebrew word. Gag. This means roof in handwriting. Gag. And in print it looks like this. Gag. Here you may be a little confused. If you were to see this word written, you might want to read it as gug. There is no vowel sound. In Hebrew, the vowels are often not written. You would know that this word is pronounced gag because it has been taught to you before. And this is why the Nikud is so important. The Nikud shows learners of the Hebrew language what vowel sound is used in words, but don't rely on them too much. As you get more experienced with Hebrew, you should be able to remember how to read words, even if the Nikud is not attached. Now it's time to introduce to you the first Nikud. Remember, Nikud are small points and lines that are placed in, under, on top, or beside consonants. The first one has the sound a, ah, just like aleph. This is kamatz, and it looks like this. And it's always written right under the consonant letter. Let's write roof a couple more times while pronouncing its sound, a. Ah. So for example, gag in handwriting looks like this. Gag. And in print, Gag. Also, the word Abba has kamatz under two of its letters. Abba, and in print version, Abba. So now you can read and write two words in Hebrew using the full vowel system. 
you can adjust the sound of the letter Gimel by writing a comma right here. Now it is read J, as in the name George. First the Gimel, and then the comma on the upper left side. And in print it looks like this. So now let's move to the fourth letter, Daled, with the sound of D. Daled. That's it, just one curve for the handwriting. And Daled in print looks like this. Daled. So let's make another word with the letter Gimel and Daled. Here, Dag means fish. This will come in very handy whenever you are in a restaurant. Let's write it. Da G And now in print. Da G Now it's time for Yana's insights. Don't get lost in studying and forget the real world. Find Hebrew letters around you. Don't see any alphabet letters around you? Go to hebrewpod101.com and check out the Alphabet transcripts for every lesson dialogue. You may not be able to read them all yet, but you can get a feel of how the Hebrew letters are used in real life. Do you know what Ahava means? It's the most romantic word in Hebrew. You will be able to write and read this and much more in the next lesson. See you then. Lehitraot! Shalom, Ani Yana. Hi everybody, I'm Yana. Welcome to HebrewPod101.com's Ivrit Beshalosh Dakot, the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Hebrew. In the last lesson, we learned how to be grateful to people by saying Toda. In this lesson, we learned some of the most common greetings used in Israel. Atem Are you ready? As Atchil. So let's start. The most used greeting is Shalom. Sha-lom. We also saw it in the first lesson. Shalom simply means hi or hello. It can also mean goodbye. We use it when we meet, but also can use it when we part. Shalom means something like peace, so it makes the greeting very special. It is common to say shalom in both informal and formal situations, and at any time of the day. In the morning, you can also greet people with Boker Tov. Boker Tov which means good morning. Boker is morning, and tov is good. During the evening, we also say erev tov. Erev tov. Erev is Hebrew for evening, so erev tov means good evening. Boker tov and erev tov are used when we meet someone, but when we leave, we don't say them again. Another way to say goodbye in Hebrew is lehitraot. Le Hit, ra, ot. It is actually more common to use lehitraot than shalom when leaving. But most people in Israel just say bye. Bye! Now you can greet people in many different ways in Hebrew. Let's review them all again. When meeting people in formal and informal situations, shalom. In the morning until the afternoon we say boker tov. And in the evening, erev tov. When living in any situation, lehitraot, or simply, bye. It's easy, isn't it? Now it's time for Yana's insights. In formal situations, Israeli people commonly greet each other by shaking hands. On the other hand, if we meet someone we are very friendly with, we kiss each other on one cheek. Don't be afraid to do it with your Israeli friends. It's normal. During the next lesson, we'll learn the meaning of the phrase Ata medaber anglit, or at Medaberet Anglit, do you already know it? We'll be waiting to talk about it with you in our next Ivrit Beshalosh Dakot lesson. Lehitraot, bye!
Remember, here's what you can do to learn all of these words by heart. Drill these words with our spaced repetition flashcards, which will help cement these words into your long-term memory. Save them to the Word Bank, your personal vocabulary collection where you can print out your own study sheets, or review the words with our looped vocabulary slideshow and play it until you know all of the words. So click the link in the description right now and sign up for your free lifetime account to get these lessons and study tools.